Hey everyone, welcome back to Nib Pickin'. My name is Steven and I'm here to give you an artist review of fountain pens. Um, today we've got a pen I've been very excited for. This pen was actually suggested to me in my comments from one of my earlier uploads, but it's also been on my radar for quite some time. I'm going to mispronounce it, so you'll have to excuse me. It is the Pilot Kakuno in Extra Fine. Um, one of the reasons that I really wanted to get this pen is one, I have a, a few Pilot pens. One of them is actually in a fine nib, which I find to be very useful. Um, and it's a decent thinness of line, but the Extra Fine, I'm excited to see if there is a difference between that and this extra fine, um, just to see how fine of a line I can get from a fountain pen. So uh, I was excited about that. The other thing that I'm excited about this pen is that it can take the uh, Pilot Con 70 converter, which is a push button converter, which I do have in the pen right now. Um, and the idea is it's filled with ink, so I'm not gonna push the button, but you push the button down and then the ink draws up just like a vacuumatic pen. So I will show you a video of the ink fill up of some line work and then uh, we'll do a drawing sample. And here's how it comes. It's in this plastic case and you can kind of see on the side, this sticker was kind of curled up when I got it and the outside was coming apart a little bit. So it's not very securely packaged. I'm not gonna count this against the pen itself because um, it seems that it's kind of the budget option. It, it's almost a fancy holder for the nib. If you look at it, it's just um, a lot of cost cutting measures in the design of the pen, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can get into this pen for pretty cheap. So let's look at the parts it comes with. Um, here's the, the pen itself. It's, you know, uh, injection molded plastic. It's got kind of a hexagonal shape. Um, I thought this shape would be kind of obnoxious when I saw the the picture of it online but it's actually it's quite comfortable and it doesn't um, poke out too much there's a little bit of a triangular shaped um, edge to it and you can kind of see the profile there but it doesn't really define where you want to put your fingers I feel like it's comfortable no matter how you hold it um, my hands just kind of naturally hold in that fashion anyway so it doesn't affect me very much um, i love the detail on the nib right here the little smiley face kind of made me giggle this is of course an extra fine nib um, and with a little pressure you can pull the nib and section out and i checked recently with my pilot metropolitan it is possible to swap this extra fine nib with the pilot's fine and you can actually just put the entire section right into the pen. Um, so that's interesting to know if you prefer the, the um, Metropolitan's body and materials and all that. So there's the, the uh, nib. And one thing I do like about Pilot's sections is that they, they have these kind of grooves on the side. They're very subtle. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, it really locks the nib into place, so it's impossible to misalign it. And I think that's a really good detail on their part. So this comes together really easily. So the body again is plastic, not much to say here. It's a cartridge converter pen, and um, it does come with a cartridge. We'll take a look at that in a second. Here's the cap, also plastic. It's got this kind of interesting um, indentation around the center right where the blind cap is. I'm not sorry, not, not the blind cap, the, um, the slip and seal cap that keeps the pen nib from drying out. Um, some holes in the top here and there's a little, um, I'm not sure what the purpose is of this little bump on the side here, but it doesn't affect anything. It's a clipless cap, which I don't mind at all. I don't usually clip my caps anyway. so. Those are the parts there. And then beyond that, in the packaging, there is a single pilot um, cartridge. You can buy more of these cartridges. You just pop it in there. Um, personally, I'm not going to use that because I bought this right here is the Pilot Con 70, 
one of the main reasons I was interested in this pen over other options that are in the lower budget end of the Pilot family was the ability to do um, to use this Pilot Con 70. It's a really cool um, converter because it has this push button mechanism. So essentially, um, it turns a cartridge pen into a vacuumatic because of the action you just push, and you can see that there's a, a rubber stopper that goes down, seals off um, on the end here, and then draws ink up, and it fits right nicely into to, uh, this pen. It costs an extra $10, at least for me. Um, that's what the price I found it at, and I don't think that's too much, even though it's expensive on the end of uh, what most converters cost. It's a unique style, and it's very um, interesting as a concept. I hope it, it works well in this pen. I was a little disappointed by the plastic that this converter is made of. It feels kind of fragile, a little bit brittle, like it could crack if, if I'm not careful with it, so I'm going to be very careful. Um, and the rest of the packaging uh, it includes some instructions on the back. And obviously, um, this is kind of like a school pen. It seems to be marketed towards more younger users or students, that kind of thing. You know, it's a budget pen. So that's kind of how they did their motif for the, the graphic design. It's a nice little instruction manual, not something that I really need as someone who's used fountain pens before, but it's good that they have it if this is your first fountain pen. And it even says on the back, simply the best choice for your first fountain pen. Well, we'll see about that. I'm going to fill it up with some ink and let's see what kind of lines we can get. Okay, so today I've decided I want to try platinum carbon ink in this pen. It's just going to be a little bit of a, a stress test because um, platinum carbon ink tends to be a bit thicker. Um, it's known as being able to be used uh, over it, um, with watercolor. A lot of people use it that way. It's one of the more permanent black inks. And uh, I tried it when I did the Platinum Preppy uh, for a video that I did, and the results were not very good. And I'm wondering if that's because I need to work on my Preppy nib and kind of build it up a little bit and uh, fix some of its uh, some of the damage that's been done to it for all the years that I've been using it. And so I want to see if this extra fine nib can handle something as viscous as the uh, carbon ink. So we're going to give it a try. So I, I popped this converter on and it just barely fits. As you can see right here, it goes up to about just about maybe a, a quarter inch, a couple millimeters from the edge. So um, barely fits in there. And it did feel a little bit uncomfortable pushing it on the cheap plastic to cheap plastic. I'm, I'm not super excited about the, the build of this converter, even though it was more expensive. If it works well, it works well. I just wouldn't be swapping it in and out um, of other pens anytime soon. So popping the pen into the ink, what should happen is that I will push down and ink should come up into the pen. And there it is. Oh, that is cool. That is really fun. Okay. Mm, so there we go. It doesn't seem to be getting a lot of ink into there. What I'm going to do really quick is uh, utilize the ink filling mechanism inside the bottle by flipping the bottle upside down. And that drops some ink into this little plastic uh, thing that's contained within the bottle. And I see if that gives me a little bit more. Oh yeah, definitely. Hmm. The thing about this filling system is it does seem to put a lot of air bubbles in. So we'll have to let that sit for a bit and see how much ink actually went into the pen. Anyway. Just time to blot this off with a piece of tissue or a, or a cloth, and um, we're going to see what kind of lines we can get. We're going to see what kind of lines we can make with this pen. The bubbles kind of work themselves out. It looks like the, the Con 70 filled to about half full. Um, I wish it was a little more, but not going to complain. I do enjoy filling my pens. So we're going to start with some lines. 
Okay, wow, that is a very nice thin line. So it does seem significantly different from my Metropolitan, which is a an extra fine. One of the kind of um, trade-offs when it comes to thin lines is being able to draw a nice long line without it being interrupted. So let's see how that goes. Oh yeah, it holds all the way through. Um, get some scribbly lines. I'm looking, feeling the nib and it doesn't feel scratchy really. It does have tooth. Extra fine and fine nibs do have a little bit of tooth. You can feel the texture of the paper, but I mean, come on, that's not a bad thing. That could be very nice when you're drawing to feel the paper. So these scribbles seem to work really nicely. I'm going to draw a square and then I'm going to see like how well I can fill that square. Okay, as expected with a line with a nib that's this thin, um, you definitely will get line texture when you're doing fills. Um, if you're trying to fill a big area, this is probably not the best pen for that because, um, yeah, you, you'd want like a, a, a medium um, at least for a nib to really get that going. But I think that with a certain style, you want a little bit of a scratchy texture in the middle there. So that's useful. Um, let's try a little bit of reverse writing. Ooh, now this does not feel good. I think that the, the nib itself is a little bit, um, is, is nicely thin just the way that it writes in the regular way, but the reverse writing is kind of scratchy and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I saw some paper fibers come up on the back end of the nib there. So I do not recommend reverse writing with this, but if you look at what you can do with this pen just as how thin the lines are, I don't feel like you would need to do any reverse writing. This can just be its own thing. So I, I, I really am impressed with the lines this can make. I do see a significant difference between um, my Pilot Metropolitan, the Pilot Fine nib, and this one right here. Um, the Pilot Fine is, is also a, a really nice line and there are people who I'm sure would prefer that, but I'm very excited about this extra fine. I can't wait to draw something significant with it, which is what I'm gonna do next. See you soon. All right, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, first thing first, I was feeling in a kind of a floral mood, so I am drawing some flowers which are native to my home state of California. Um, if you are good, maybe you can recognize what flowers they are, or I suppose that's if I am good. Um, if you don't recognize the one that I draw at the bottom right hand corner, then I should probably quit being an artist. Uh, but anyway, something I am kind of getting into, classifying plants and that sort of thing um, as a science teacher. But uh, that was lots of fun, and I'm, I'm really digging this Pilot Kakuno. The line is super fine. I can get lots of stuff um, in that I couldn't get detail-wise with other pens. So this might even be my favorite fountain pen that I have, which is crazy because it cost about half as much as some other ones that I own. Um, Anyway, uh, addendum to what I said before, the flower on the left hand side, if you don't know what that is, then I should quit. Uh, one thing that I'm doing a little bit different, you're going to see it in a little bit, is uh, I decided to bust out some watercolors because uh, one of the things about Pilot's, I'm um, sorry, about Platinum's uh, Carbon Black is that it's supposed to not, um, it's supposed to respond well to watercolor. So I wanted to see if I can draw uh, with inks and then lay watercolors over the top of it without the ink running. Um, that was a problem with some pens that put down a heavier line, but with this uh, Kakuno and its super extra fine lines, I just thought it might be interesting to see if it works. And um, actually it, uh, it did. It worked really well. I didn't see any bleeding. I didn't see any running of the ink. So uh, this is kind of a power combo. That Pilot Kakuno Extra Fine 
with the Carbon Black by Platinum, um, along with some nice watercolors. You can do a lot of things. So it, it inspired me to get back into watercolor, which is something I hadn't done in quite some time. Uh, and it reminded me how much I love um, watercolors. So that's what the rest of this video is gonna be. And I'm just gonna let it play out and I'll see you in a couple of minutes where I talk about my conclusions about this pen. Obviously I like it, um, but whether I'd recommend it for you. All right. Right now for my final thoughts on this pen. Um, first of all, this is a really fun pen to play around with. At the price point, I believe around $13, $14 on Amazon, um, plus $10 for the converter. It's not a bad starting point for a pen. I really do love the super thin fine lines that you can get with this pen. Um, it could even be one of my favorites, honestly, which is surprising given the price point of this pen. So I'm super impressed with this. It's a great tool for artists. Um, I do recommend it. One of the things that's not so great is um, I was sort of unimpressed with the Pilot Con 70 converter. It feels a little cheaply made for a more expensive converter. That's a problem. Um, and I felt like the plastic even uh, could almost crack as I was putting it in. Uh, which is not something you want from a high-end converter. Um, and the push button action is nice, but it does put a lot of bubbles into the pen, so the fill is not quite at the capacity of the converter. To be honest, I don't mind the Pilot Con 40 uh, or Con 50 converter, which is just the regular piston style converter, so not something that I feel like I would need to purchase again for any of my other pens. Uh, but the Kakuno itself is a fantastic pen. I'm very happy with my purchase and I will be using this a lot in the future. All right, so that does it for today's edition of Nib Pickin'. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content like this. Um, and I will see you next time.